The Center on Law and Security is a policy um, resource for people in Washington, people internationally, and for the public at large. What we do is we bring together people who need to talk to one another, and we get them to talk about the issues they need to talk about for the benefit of protecting the United States and, and the world beyond that in the war against um, Islamic fundamentalist terror. Um, and um, we do a variety of things towards that end. We um, monitor what's happening in the U.S. government very closely to see what the emergency constitution that, in essence, we're functioning under is doing, what's happening in terms of laws, um, really, and, um, and um, whether or not they're actually changing laws, what's actually being implemented. We look at law enforcement and how effective they are, how effective the NYPD is and what they're doing. Um, and we try to pinpoint problems that need answers, either policy answers or actual answers of just, um, of just bringing people together. And, and then we publish um, what we find out. Right after 9-11, um, when President Bush issued an emergency decree, within two weeks there was an opinion that came down um, from his lawyers which said that he had broad executive powers to do what needed to be done to fight back against the terrorists, both at home and abroad. This notion of executive privilege um, and emergency powers unleashed a um, thinking about what the United States needed to do and how it needed to behave that enabled the executive to make policy without actually going through Congress or other, um, other agencies to, to vet it. Um, these legal, the legal documents that were drawn up said first, the United States does not have to abide by the Geneva Conventions when it comes to certain of these terrorists. Um, and two, that we needed to do what we needed to do to get information from the terrorists. Guantanamo opened uh, four months later in January of 2002. And from Guantanamo to Abu Ghraib, which was significantly uh, later, um, the United States, in its efforts to get information, devised a series of coercive measures, at times much more coercive than at other times, to get the information they thought they needed to make us secure as a nation. After 9-11, we were in a certain kind of shock and horror, and we were wounded. And we were going to fight back every way we knew how that seemed smart to us and that would get us what we needed. And in a war on terror, intelligence is the primary um, thing that you need. And you need it quickly, and you need it responsibly. I think the further we get from 9-11 and the immediacy of 9-11 and the immediate fear of it, the more tolerant we become as a society in many ways. And one of these ways has to do with um, whether or not we want to torture as a matter of course and a matter of policy and even be involved in the discussion of what is torture and can we do it in limited circumstances. So, And I think that that tolerance um, about torture extends to other things that may have to do with civil liberties and other laws that may have infringed upon the rights of others. What is the balance between security and personal liberty, as opposed to liberty as some you know, amorphous concept? In terms of what actually the balance is, there are three issues at stake here. One issue is the perception of safety. It feels better to people to get on a plane and to be searched and have other people searched and to get on that plane. And they feel safer, whether or not it's valid or not, whether randomness can work. That it, there's a, and I think that's important. I think feeling safe is half the game. I think it's the other side of, of being fearful and not really understanding how you're behaving is that if you feel safe, you behave in a more generous way and sometimes in a very mu much smarter way, which is what we need. We need to be behaving in a very smart, focused way. Um, so that would be another aspect of it. I think a third thing is that you must accept the fact that there is no such thing as a thousand percent security, even if you searched every single person. There is always the chance that something could happen. And I think New York has done a very good job, just as an example, striking that balance. Because New York accepts the fact that some of the trucks are going to be looked into when they go through the tunnels. And, and they do it with some measure of intelligence about what to look for. Um, and the same thing with perhaps with the subways, um, provided that they do that legally and, and within certain bounds. 